Um, so our next speaker is, is uh, Brigitte Duquesne, uh, and she's going to talk about uh, the uh, elusive parasite Cryptosporidium. Yes, so following so brilliant uh, presentation of uh, English speaker, native speaker, I think I have first to apologize for my French accent. So um, this one. I mean. So I'm going to present you some field trial we implemented in France to evaluate the protocol of palmomycin administration, uh, trying to control neonatal cryptosporidiosis in ruminants. So cryptosporidiosis is a poorly controlled zoonotic disease, and up to date we, don't, we have no vaccine and only one licensed molecule to treat this. Anyway, published literature supports that palmomycin has antiprotozoal properties and show efficacy in the control of cryptosporidiosis in ruminants. And, however, most of studies have been conducted under experimental infection and wide-ranging doses have been recommended. So, we have a study of reference, a fire some years ago, uh, he concluded that paromycin is effective as prophylaxis for cryptosporidiosis in dairy cows. The objectives of our trials were to evaluate the efficacy, but in field condition, of this proposed protocol of paromycin. And we tried to determine the protocol, but according to an appropriate use of antibiotics. I mean, the smallest uh, doses and maybe the smallest duration too, but to be effective. So our materials and methods were our farms with a story of neonatal scores caused by uh, cryptosporidium. And as you know, um, when you have farm with this pathology, it's a, really a recurrent one. Uh, the setup of the trials were when the diarrhea occurs and were uh, diagnosed by the vet of the farm. Animals born on date, starting on wards, were included in, in the study into two groups, one treated group and one untreated group, randomly and alternatively assigned to one group or another. We follow the cases from birth to day 28 and analyze the result with SPSS uh, statistic uh, software. So the location of our trials were in France, the first one in Charol for calf study, and the other one in Pyrenees in Asson for uh, sheep. So this is the first farm, a really typical uh, Charolais uh, farm with a circle herd of 100 cows. So the farm management is very typical of this region, so the dams are vaccinated, uh, there are uh, 100 calvings, around 30 calving per month, and the calving period starts on December. Calves receive colostrum. What is more typical is the calves are tied behind their mother and inspected twice daily by the farmer who let them suckle. After this, when, when three months old, the calves accompany the dams to pasture around the farm, and bell calves are sold at 10 months old. So this is the shame of the stable, as you can see. I don't know if I can show it. If it's a pointer, yes. Yes, here. Yeah. So the, the, the calves are tied behind their uh, mother. And so it was easy for us to have two groups because we have two ranks. So we chose to have this group A and group B. And the floors uh, is concrete with bedding and straw. So uh, the farm was recruit, recruited uh, based on the known story of cryptosporidiosis, and um, the vet called us at the end of January when uh, occurred neonatal calf diarrhea. He diagnoses uh, cryptosporidiosis by rapid test on farm, immunochromatographic, and we just had at this time uh, cryptosporidiosis. Um, I have to add this because uh, when I submitted my abstract, I also uh, wrote about a field trial uh, with goats, but in this farm, we also had E. coli, and you imagine we cannot um, 
set up this uh, with an untreated group if we have E. coli uh, without a high percentage of mortality. So we decided not to pursue this uh, trial. So from that uh, date onwards, animals were included in the study in the two groups. The treated group was the group A, and the untreated group was the group B. And, um, but neither the vet or the farmer were informed of the content of the packages. I think it was really important not to know if which one was the uh, palmomycin and which was, was the placebo. So this is the chronogram of the trial. You can see the vet and uh, D1 and D28, uh, the animals were weighed. And as you can see, three, three, three times a week, faces, this uh, sample were taken by the vet and sent to the lab. And the treatment was from day 5 to 10. So they received uh, 50 milligrams per kilo of powder. In the group A, it was palmomycin sulfate. In the group B, it was placebo uh, during five days, starting the fifth day after birth. When diarrhea, the calves anyway received, but in both groups, additional dose of foscargil. It was a demand of the farmer, and we agree with this uh, for the welfare uh, of the animals. All animals enrolled in the experiment were monitored for the period of 28 days, and the observations we recorded were weighed, fecal score. Fecal score was from zero if no diarrhea, one if formless stool, two if it's freed feces, and three if, uh, if feces were watery and dehydration. And every, every week, three fecals, uh, feces samples were taken and sent to the lab. The departmental lab used a flotation method to assess the presence of cryptosporidium oocyst uh, with an, an intensity scale from zero to five. So here you have the results. We compare a uh, mean of the two groups, and you can see untreated group, the total days of diarrhea was three, and treated was one. We have, for this, for this uh, factor, we have a significant result, statistically significant result. For diarrhea severity, it was the sum of the index scores. We see we also have an important difference anyway. Um, no uh, statistically significant due to the small size of our sample. For the weight gain, we also have a big difference. I mean big, but it was a difference uh, between the two groups. We see one kilo of uh, 600 gram. And if we uh, delete, we try to delete by um, um, statistical anal uh, covariance analysis, we, we have a two kilo difference. This covariance analysis was to delete the effect of the uh, weight of the animal uh, at birth. So we, we were a little bit surprised when we, we saw the oocyst excretion curve. You see, oh sorry. You see, uh, in orange it was the treated group, and in uh, black we have the you have the untreated group. But you can see, the both curve have has the, have the same shape. Uh, so the the intensity of excretion was the same. We just have a move the, the a move to the right. It means a delay in time, and we suppose this um, allow the the cow to the, sorry, the calf, to um, get out the critical period because uh, the calf in the treated group don't have diarrhea just like in the untreated group. And here you see the severity of diarrhea, most important in the untreated group. So, so what was the result of this field trial? The, this field trial, the result was clinical care and also the, um, the behavior of the animal was very different. If I ask you which animal was treated and 
untreated. I imagine you can, you can answer to this question. Uh, anyway, the, the, the farmer and the vet, two days after treatment, they phoned me and they, they knew which one was the placebo and which one was not. So you see, I precise, if some of you don't <laughs> doesn't see, oh sorry. Sorry, so this one is really the treated one, and you see very shiny, very good appetite, and very shiny coat. Uh, in the opposite, you have the other group. So the second trial we implemented was with uh, transhuman heart of 220 Basco Bearnese milk ewes and five rams. It was uh, uh, this sheep uh, transhuman heart in Pyrenees. So the farm management, the housing is a very uh, large old shed and it, it's divided in several boxes uh, through bedded pens and lambs are grouped with their ewes until five weeks old uh, when to be sold and in the other boxes uh, the replacement ewes lambs are kept. Uh, grazing on meadows around the farm from March to June and as it, it's uh, uh, transhuman's health, after this, from Ju June to September, all the animals uh, go to the mountain and are kept at, during this time by another farmer. So the background of this farm was the same of the uh, calf one. Uh, we have uh, cryptosporidiosis the previous year, uh, on March, with an important mortality rate. The lambing season in this farm is uh, October to December, the majority of uh, lambing. So, but when we set up the, the trial, it was at the end of the period. At this time, uh, it was the lambing of young youth and 20% adults. We, onset, uh, we, we set up the, the trial in February. Uh, I, I don't think I have time to detailed the trial, but it was the same protocol as for calves. The results of this trial, you see, the total days of diarrhea was uh, only two days, 0.7 for the treated, but more than four days for the untreated. Here we could not um, uh, assess the diarrhea severity because the farmer only records absence or presence. So it's only the total duration. But uh, the most important, I think, it's the untreated group. We had a 20% mortality. The weight gain was not really different, but I remark uh, many, many uh, different weights um, for the lambs. So I try with a covariance analysis to delete the effect of the the weight at birth, and in this case we see a small difference uh, because 340 grams more in the treated group. So here you have the same um, result than for calves. I mean diarrhea. Diarrhea was, uh, the duration of diarrhea was longer in the untreated group, but here we also have um, the, the same shape um, for the curve or cyst excretion, but in this case, we have also a reduction of the number of oocysts excreted. So the discussion, much the limitation, the limitation was the sample size, but because we, we could not have very statistically significant result. The, the significant result we have was the happiness and the, uh, of the farmer and the vet. But statistically, we could not. But I, I think for the animal welfare and also for farmer agreement, we cannot ask him to, to keep more than 12 animals untreated. Nevertheless, these trials indicate that palmomycin at 50 mg kilo during five days doesn't cause inappetence or drug toxicity, in the opposite, uh, good appetite in the treated group. And 
according to the O6 expression curves, we have the same result as fire some years ago. It appeared that this dosage kill, maybe for the lamb trial, or anyway, retard development of the endogenous stages of crypto. Continuous expression decreasing and no rebound effect were observed after end of the treatment. Don't ask me how it works, but it works. <laughs> so, okay, and the treatment allowed to reduce the severity. It's my, my last one. It's the last one. The treatment uh, allowed to reduce the severity and the duration of diarrhea, which is important, I think, for the welfare of the animals as well as for both short and long term health impact. So, the conclusion is, is uh, as there is today no vaccine, unfortunately, complementary to hygienic measures, parmomycin provides an additional effective tool to control neonatal cryptosporidiosis in ruminant. I know time, time run away, but I cannot end <laughs> without thanks. Um, my young colleague, Sébastien and Arnaud, who accompanied me on the fields, and mostly Jean-Charles, Clément, and Jérôme, the, far, the farmers and the vets, so enthusiastic for this uh, trials, and also Tilza Christian and Thierry Casajou for the lambs, but also the professor of parasitology, Christophe Chartier, and uh, statistic Pierre Couver for the help, and also the person working in the departmental lab. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brigitte. Uh, I'm, it's going to be a busy coffee time, I think, for all of you to chase these speakers down to ask the questions. A shame about that.